Let's see how old some of you guys are. You guys remember this? Welcome to today's 3D print. This is Mega Man's helmet and blaster. And I was actually able to print it big enough to fit on the CR-10 no less. I was afraid I was going to have to go with the CR-10S4, but I didn't. It's even got a handle in there. I want to make a project out of this. So I'm going to make these light up yellow have buttons inside here so they charge up and so this charges up and starts glowing brighter and brighter the more charge you get and maybe even a sound effect when you fire off the blaster I don't remember if the helmet in the original 8-bit one lit up or not I know in the new one this would turn red but I don't think that happened in the new in the older version I think the older version was a bit simpler than that and it didn't do that but that is pretty slick I even love how polygoned it is because that's reminiscent of the old video games um, and it's pretty cool that I can make it big enough to fit my head. Although the next time I'll bend these out a little bit because it's a little tough to get over my head. Plenty of room inside. I'm going to put some padding inside there, but otherwise pretty cool. Now, this file, I'm going to provide you a link to my version of this. It'll be marked as a remix of the original version because the original version was a bit messed up. It was lopsided, uneven, so I took it into Tinkercad, cut the thing in half, stretched it a little taller to fit a human head, and then I mirrored it left and right so that now it sits correctly level so both sides are the same size the one, you know, this eye was up a little higher, this is a little lower, this is a little wider it just, it just wasn't very even so I corrected all that and besides a little overhang issues which are nothing um, it printed fine. This is in Sunlu PLA plus blue perfect Mega Man color so when I go to make my next revision of this I will be make, using the same plastic, I love the color, it's perfect I did have a problem with the blaster though. I think this might be a problem with the, the TiVo Tornado. It appears to only do this when I do thin wall large objects with an inward arcing curve. I get this wobble. You can see it clearly in the video. Now the thing is, before you say it's, it's heat or something like that, I think it's mechanical. Because the wobble is actually a corkscrew. You can actually follow this up and your hand will go up higher and higher and higher and higher until you get to the top. So it's actually a corkscrew. Which tells me it's something beside, it's more than just something wobbling. I mean, that's weird that it would be a corkscrew like that. But otherwise, printed fantastic. I'm going to try to take this exact same G-code and print it on the CR-10 and see what it does. But I'll use a cheaper plastic, not the PLA Plus, just to see what happens. Um, I also cheapened out on this, so the handle's a little weak inside because I didn't use any infill. This is all hollow. There's, there's no structure in here at all except the inner and outer wall. And that's the other weird thing. Only arcing walls get the wobble. The straight wall inside there, no wobble. It's perfectly straight. Not a single deviation, which is weird. So I'm going to work on fixing that see what I can figure out. But this, I want to get more advanced. I want to do a project. Um, series of videos on this. Um, this, I just scaled it up. I measured my arm, made sure the opening was big enough that my arm would fit in there and it's perfect. You, you, you wear a, a blue hoodie or something like that and that'll be an absolute perfect fit for your Mega Man blaster. And I want to try to put lights on here so that these will charge up as you press a button inside. Sound effects, light here. I think that'd be really cool. I'm thinking about making my first Halloween costume for next year. You know, spend the next year learning the skills necessary to make it work so that I can have a semi-functional Mega Man costume. I think that'd be pretty cool. And go from there. I hope you guys enjoy it. I will provide another video next week on how to use Tinkercad to modify that helmet like I did to correct the symmetry failure in the model. It's actually not that hard to do, so I'm going to make a little tutorial video showing you guys how to do it. I think you guys would enjoy that. So. I'm going to start doing more of this kind of stuff on the channel. I want to do not necessarily cosplay kind of stuff, but projects. Things more involved than simply clicking print on a printer and ending up with a cool pretty print, but actually making usable stuff, fun stuff, more involved stuff, some mixed arts stuff, so adding electronics to it, adding um, other kind of skills to it to get a more advanced end result than simply a printed part. I think that would be fun, I think it would be cool. And my budgetary restrictions are your benefit because these, the point of these projects are going to be projects that you, my viewers, all of you can do. They won't be relegated to people who have lots of money and lots of advanced skills. The whole idea would be how cool a project can you come up with with minimal skills and minimal money so that 
anybody who can afford a 3D printer can also afford to do the project. I think that would be pretty cool. And if you don't like it, I'll blast you. That's right. So stay tuned.